Hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Happy Wednesday. Hope everybody's doing fantastic. Hello, hello, hello. Just giving people time to log in, join in. So I'm live on Instagram. Hey, Instagram fam. I am live on TikTok. Hey, TikTok fam. So, what's up? Happy Wednesday. Happy Wednesday. Hope you guys are doing fantastic. Absolutely amazing. Hi, Delilah Rojo. Thank you for joining. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hey, sis. Miss, I'm probably Yankee. Okay, I probably said it right. 82. Hey, hey, everyone. 100 underscore Graham Mello. Listen, God always sends confirmations. God always sends confirmations. So he speaks in very, very mysterious ways sometimes. Thank you, Miss Jai. 12, 12. What's up, everybody? All right. What's up, TikTok? How are you guys doing? Thank you for joining. I'm grateful to be here. Thank you for joining, everyone. If it's your first time, thank you. Hey, if, it, if you are a return viewer, hey. <laughs> Thanks again for joining. You are appreciated. I'm grateful. Hey, TikTok family. So, again, I'm live. Instagram, TikTok. So, um, I'm here. I am here every Wednesday. Every Wednesday, I'm here. Sherry Moore, 1964. Girl, welcome. Welcome. Make sure you all share out the video. Tag a friend who needs to hear this message tonight. Um, make sure you share it out with someone. Uh, give me one second. Thank you for the love. I am going to pin a comment. Give me one second, y'all. And TikTok, I'll be with you momentarily. Uh, um, what is my S A M A N T A J? Hey, 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 everybody! All right. So, happy Wednesday, y'all. Happy Wednesday, TikTok family. I'm trying to be more consistent on TikTok. This is like my second live on TikTok. So, I'm usually on Instagram, but um, definitely expanding out for everyone. So, happy Wednesday. Hope everyone's doing fantastic. And as I always say, I'm not planning to be here before you long. I say that every week, I promise. Um, but I am Samantha. If you don't know, if it's your first time, Samantha J. West. I'm here every Wednesday, 6.30 East Central Standard Time. And I am always bringing the, bringing the word into the world. Because I think truly that I am sometimes someone's only word and maybe their their only hope right and I'm you know I like to let people know how much the Bible our lives correlate with the Bible and everything 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 we go through in life we can find solutions in the word and I just like to mix it give y'all some good word give you some good stuff and here I am, here I am, here I am. So, hopefully I don't be here long. <laughs> but 
But if you got questions, comments, whatever, make sure you drop them in the chat. And we're gonna get into it. We're gonna get into it. If I miss it, forgive me. Just ask again. Um, but yeah, same thing for you, TikTok. If you got questions, you got comments, just drop it in the chat. We're gonna get into it. Forgiveness. We're talking about forgiveness tonight. Forgiveness, forgiveness, forgiveness. Forgiveness is one of those things that for some reason is so hard for people to do. And not even realizing how much it actually impacts your prayers, how much it impacts God answering your prayers, how much it impacts, you know, um, your blessings coming into your life. And I get it. I get it. Someone may have hurt you a day ago, a year ago, 15 years ago, and you are having a really difficult time getting over that hump, getting over that hurt, getting over that pain. I get it. We've all been there. We can all relate, right? You know, forgiveness is one of those things, like, it makes you feel resentful. It makes you feel, like, bitter. It can make you feel like, you know, like you just got a lot of stuff on your shoulders, like a burden that you're holding on to, right? It's one of those things that we tend to hold on to because we think that if we let this certain stuff go that someone did to us, that we're releasing them from what they did. And that's the furthest from the truth. It's loud. Okay, let me turn my um, washing machine off. Hold on. Sorry, y'all. Sorry. I hope it um, it'll stop in a minute. I'm sorry. Well, I par I press pause, but y'all tell me if it's still loud in the background. It was the washing machine. But anyway, forgiveness is one of those things like we feel like if we forgive someone for whatever they did, um, then we are releasing them from that pain. You know, we're releasing them from the hurt that they caused us thank you so much glamorous y'all let me know if it's still loud okay perfect thank you so much but we feel like you know we're letting them go from that pain that they caused us and that's actually the furthest thing from the truth it's the furthest thing from the truth right and like i said when i first came on when you hold on to this pain and you have difficulty forgiving people it's actually preventing you from moving forward in life. It's preventing you from having your prayers answered. And it's preventing your blessings from being dropped into your life. It's holding you back way more than it's holding someone else back. Right? Have you ever felt like when you don't forgive someone, not, not, you may not even know that this the fact that you don't forgive, right? Have you ever felt like... Like I said, like you have like burdens on your shoulders or you felt like, you know, it was torture for you to hold on to something that somebody did to you. Have you ever felt that, you know, you get into that space and you just have these hateful thoughts. You see this person and you just like, ew, like you, you think back automatically to what they did. You want them to die. You want them dead. You want them, you want to kill them. All of that good stuff. The Bible says, the Bible says in Matthew chapter 18, it's a some story, but it chapter 18 verses 23 through 35, where it's really a parable where Jesus is talking about how, um, you know, someone forgave the debt, the debt tour. And then he, he, he turned around and someone owed the debt tour money. I'm saying that right. Owed the debt tour money, but he didn't forgive the person that owed him money. He actually ended up throwing him in jail, but someone had literally just forgiven him for the debt that he owed. And he goes out, he sees somebody that owes him money. He throws him in jail, but won't forgive him for the money he owes, right? And the Bible says that if we don't forgive people, we get turned over to torturers. 
That's what it says in Matthew chapter 18, verse 23. It's the story in 23 through 35, but the verse is actually, um, hold on. The verse says in, uh, in verse 34. So Matthew 18, Matthew 18, verse 34, it says, In anger, his master handed him over to the jailers to be tortured. So he's saying his master being the, the debtor that had not, um, that had just put someone else in jail because he didn't forgive them. And so he said, you know, he handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he was able to pay back everything that he owed. So uh, my question is to you, like when you are holding on to this unforgiveness in your heart and this bitterness and this resentment towards someone, does it feel like torture? It could easily feel like your soul is being tortured. It can easily feel like, you know, like it's a burden weighing you down, literally, right? It's torture to you to have these hateful thoughts in your mind. It's torture to you to allow what someone did to you. Hey, I'm all right. But it's torture to have what someone did to you and you holding on to it and you allowing the devil to constantly replay that over and over and over and over again. And I get it. It's difficult to unsee the hurt that someone has caused you. It's difficult. It's difficult to go past what they did to you. So as a result, we end up holding on longer than we should to this feeling of pain. And we ended up we end up causing ourselves way more pain and way more hurt and torture. And God tells us in his word many 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 times to forgive others. Many times. It's in there so much, right? But I, it, it can truly be difficult to forgive when you've been hurt. I get it. I get it. But when you don't forgive, you walk around just angry and mad, bitter, resentful. Good night. But you walk around angry, mad, but bitter. And, and all of those feelings draw you further and further and further away from God. The more you holding on to anger, the more you holding on to this bitterness, the more you holding on to this resentment, that's not God. It's not drawing you closer to God. God wants your, to take your heart and peel away all of the um, nasty stuff, right? Naked flesh. Take it and not take the hardened, hardened heart away. And so as long as you, as long as you are holding on to those, the feelings of bitterness, resentment, and um, anger, your heart is hardened. So it's no way that you're drawing closer to God. And that's what the devil wants. The devil wants you to stay in that space. So that you can draw further and further away from God. And when you think of forgiving others, like I said, it, it, you mainly think of it, it's releasing them from the hurt. You think that it's mainly, you know, um, that they don't have to be responsible for what they did. But in reality, it, it's not. Is God says, let revenge be mine, right? It may be stated a little different in the word, but hey, Kim, I'm glad you caught me. Thank you so much. But um, it, 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 I lost my train of thought. Sorry, y'all. But forgiving someone is who hurt you, it's not about them. It's about you. The more you let go, the more you're able to grow. The more you let go to what they did to you, the sooner you can realize what God is doing through you. 
Again, God wants you to let the hardened heart go so that you can have a heart of flesh. There's a great book out called Forgiving What You Can't Forget by Lisa Turk. I can't read the last name. I, 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 I would love to read that. Forgiving what you can't forget. But you you you're you when you when you let someone when you forgive someone, you're saying more of I release you. I release you from the pain that you've caused me. I release you from the stress that you've caused me. I release you from the hurt that I have felt. I release you from the control that this has had over my life for years. I release you. That's what forgiveness is. And that's what it does for you. It's not about them at all. You're releasing them so that you can become a better person. You're releasing your attention from that person. Because whatever has your attention has your mind. If you focus on that, how are you growing? How are you giving your life to God? How are you fully surrendering when you are holding on to what someone did to you when God is constantly telling us in his word to forgive others? And I know you can, you, you're thinking now, like, what is it that someone, I mean, so an event or something is coming to your mind that's causing this. This is probably a sore subject for some. It's probably, you know, one of those subjects that's, that hits home. It may be triggering, but I want to help you come out of that. I want to help you break these chains that the devil tries to keep us in. And unforgiveness is one of those chains. If you allow it, it will keep your mind in a mental bondage for years. Well, lovely Tiffany, that's not a problem. They can play the victim. You, but you forgive them and move forward. Let them play the victim. Most people do. Most people have a huge problem holding themselves accountable. So they will play the victim. But that's what we're talking about. I want to talk about what forgiveness is not. I want to talk about the benefits of actually forgiving someone. And I want to talk about how you can actually forgive people. So that you can walk away. You can keep moving forward when someone wants to play the victim. Someone never apologizes. You may not ever get that apology that you seek, but you good because you forgave them in your heart. So if you see them again, you know what? I forgave you. <laughs> may God bless you. You don't have to be friends with them again, right? They may not ever see what they did as wrong, but that's not your problem. They may not ever see the hurt that they caused you. But you know when you hold on to the pain, like you're holding on to this pain, it is only causing you more pain. So why do you want to continue to hold on to the pain? Why do you want to continue to hold on to the pain? If it's causing you more pain, pain hurts. Who wants to continue to be hurt? Who wants to continue to be hurt? You focus so much on them and what happens that you lose focus of you lose focus of what God wants for you. Cuz you're so busy focused on them and what they did to you. You holding on to that pain and your heart is just hurt. It's affecting your relationships, it's affecting your life, it's affecting your um your walk with God is affecting your just everything. Your business, your money, everything is affected by your unforgiveness. But I want you to be free from it. I want you to have a fulfilling life, the life that God has promised us all. Right? And honestly, I 
really thought that I had a, a forgiving heart. Like I've always been, I forgive people easily. Like always, for as far back as I can remember, I have always forgiven you. Like you do me wrong. Okay. I forgive you. Let you let God deal with it. For as far back as I can remember. And I didn't really think I had an issue with forgiveness, right? Until God actually sat me down one day. He sat me down one day and brought forth something to my light. Or brought forth something to light of something I was holding on to. And <laughs> so when God first told me to move to Wisconsin. So for you all that don't know, I moved from Atlanta. I moved from Atlanta. I'm now in Wisconsin. Um, it was a season of isolation for me. And, um, you know, a season of isolation. When I initially came here, I was instructed that I was coming here to help someone build a ministry, right? And um, didn't realize it was a season of isolation until after the fact, whatever, right? But I was instructed to come and help someone build a ministry. I actually was helping them build the ministry. Like we were building it out. Everything was good. And then one day it was just like, I realized like I'm doing all of the work. Like I was literally doing everything. And it, it bothered me because I'm just like, well, God didn't send me here to do this. Like God didn't send me here to do everything for you. Like one thing, three things I'll never do. I'm never going to excuse me, want something more than you do. I'm never going to want something more for you rather than you want for yourself. I'm never going to make your, you know, want your business to be more successful than you want your business to be. And I'm not going to allow anyone or anything to steal my peace. And I started noticing this was happening. All three of those things were happening. Like I said, here I am doing all the work. I'm literally building the entire ministry out. I'm doing all the work behind the scenes. And this person was the front, the front of the, you know, in front of the camera. And I'm doing everything behind the scenes. I was putting together freaking um, um, systems. I was getting systems in place. I was making sure it was like, pay thing, ways people can give to the ministry, just all the systems that made the ministry run, right? And like I said, one day I sat back and I'm like, I'm doing everything. I'm doing way more than you're doing. And I don't like that. Like, I don't like the way I feel. Like, again, it started to make me, my peace started to shake up a little bit. And so I stopped. I stopped. I stopped helping. I just stopped completely stopped because I prayed about it. And I'm like, God, I know you didn't send me here for this. I know this is not your plan. Anything absent of your peace, when it starts to strip my peace from me, I know that's a problem because I've worked way too hard to get to this peace. So I stopped. I stopped doing everything. I stopped sending emails. I stopped uh, setting up meetings. I stopped doing the back, the uh, background work. I, I just stopped. Literally, cold turkey. I stopped. And I walked away. Because I'm like, mm -mm, this ain't it, right? So I stopped, walked away, and I started building my own ministry. I'm thinking everything fine. Everything is good. I'm good. I wipe my hands clean of it. I'm like, you know, be blessed. Have, I wish you nothing but success in everything that you do. I'm good. Or so I thought. One time I was doing a fast and I'm praying and I'm like, okay, God, reveal to me everything that I need to continue to hold, that I'm holding on to, that's keeping me from you, everything that's, um, you know, examine my heart, reveal me to me, you know what I'm saying? And, and help me see the things that will, that are blocking me from you or keeping me from you and remove them. Help me deal with me, right? And that was a prayer similar and it was brought forth that I needed to forgive this person for um, basically using me to help build the ministry, 
right? To help build their ministry. I didn't even know that I was holding on to that in my heart. I didn't know that I had this unforgiveness in my heart. And as a result, but what happened is I started like every time I would see this person online, I would feel some kind of way. And I didn't understand it because I'm like, I didn't feel like, you know, I was holding nothing in my heart, like nothing. I just was like, whatever, you know, but it was always like, a, it wasn't like a mad or angry thing. It was more like a whatever, like, I don't want to see this, you know, and I would keep it scrolling, keep it moving. And, and I asked God to reveal to me, like, what's up? Like, you know, what's good? Help me so I can go to the next level, everything. That, and he told me, like, you need to forgive him. And I was just like, I didn't even know I was holding on to it. You know what I'm saying? Like real talk. I'm thinking I, everything was good. And he's like, you need to forgive him. You need to forgive him for not doing his part with what was supposed to be done. You need to forgive him for um, pretty much making you, do, not making you, but relying on you to do everything. And he not doing nothing. I ain't going to say he wasn't doing nothing, but it was very limited, okay? And it was like I felt and God revealed to me that I had a spirit of bitterness in my heart towards this person because here it is, I packed up my life. You know what I'm saying? Being obedient, of course. It, was, it had nothing to do with him. But I, I packed up, moved here to help. And for me to... I didn't even know again, but for me to, I guess, feel like I was taken advantage of being used, it hurt. It hurt. And I didn't even realize it until God revealed it to me. God told me I had bitterness into my, in my heart that I needed to let go of and I needed to forgive him. And guess what I did? I ended up sending him a message and I was like, listen, I'm sorry. I forgive you for do, not not doing your part while we were working together. I forgive you for, you know, you using me. I forgive you for um, you lightweight taking advantage of the fact that I was there and I was doing all the work for you. I forgive you for, you know, just everything. Like I literally, and I told him, I was like, you know, I felt a spirit of bitterness starting to creep up inside of me. And that's what the devil does. Like, all you got to do is give him about that much of it. You see the, you see, in between my fingers? Y'all see? In between my fingers? I, that, that's all he need. Is an opening about yay big to get in. And I had opened up that door and allowed the spirit of bitterness to start creeping up inside of me. Henceforth, why every time I saw him post or whatever, I would feel some kind of way. Wasn't angry, but I knew it was something. It was bitterness that I had in my heart from a spirit of unforgiveness that I didn't even know. I didn't even know. And this is, we're talking about the sneaky unforgiveness, but that's how the devil works. He'll make you think like everything is fine. Everything is good. You feel like, oh, I forgave that person. I came out of that relationship. They did me wrong, whatever, whatever. My friends did me wrong, blah, blah, blah. But I'm moving forward in life. And here, here come. But every time you see them on social media, you feel some kind of way. If, if, if they pop up on your timeline, you feel some kind of way. But you thought you forgave them. That's how the devil works. And some of us hold on to, we know we hadn't forgiven people. Some of us know that you haven't forgiven them, right? I didn't even know that it had caused me pain the way that it did. I didn't even know it had caused me pain. But you may be aware, you may not know. Like I said, you may have that bitterness inside of you. You may have that resentment inside of you. You may have that anger inside of you. Like every time you see somebody, 
and post something that you know did something to you, you need to check that. That's a spirit of unforgiveness. It's a spirit of unforgiveness. And if you know that you got that spirit inside of you, you definitely need to check that. If you know every time you see this person or this person's name come up or whatever, and you feel some kind of way for sure, you definitely need to check yourself. That is unforgiveness. And it's not God. Right? And like I said earlier, the longer you hold on to what they did to you, the more you can allow God to do what he needs to do through you so that you can get your prayers answers, so that you can start receiving the blessings that he has for you. You got the right to feel angry. You got the right to be upset. What happened to you was awful. I am not dismissing it. I'm not minimizing it. Miss Ashley Monet, can you forgive a person but not deal with them anymore? Absolutely. Absolutely. You forgiving them doesn't mean they have to be in your life again, ever. Forgiving them is for you. It's for you. But no matter how bad you feel, no matter how much hurt you you have about whatever happened you must totally learn how to forgive them release them and let them go can they sit at your table you don't have to you don't have to allow somebody back in your life just because you forgave them if god the Holy Spirit lead you to let them invite them to an event that you may have or something that you got going on? Sure. That's when you know you've really forgiven them. When they can come and sit. And you like, girl, whatever. That was long gone, whatever. Right? But release them so that you can be set free. Oh, get twisted by T. Her question is, so TikTok, she said, can, can you forgive without letting them know? Because that's the part I don't want to do, especially when they're used to you being the bigger person. You can forgive. And I'm going to answer that. You can forgive without letting them know. Sometimes, you know, God may tell you, forgive them. And it's just between you and him. But sometimes. Sometimes, y'all, God will tell you that you got to reach out to that person and forgive them. He has done it to me. I had to do it with my family. I had to do it with my family. And I just told you, I had to do it with this, with this person. I had literally had to reach out to him. God made me face it. I had to do it with my family. I had to call them one day because I was like, God, you know, everything, whatever's holding me back. That's one of my prayers. Like, God, whatever's holding me back, examine my heart, bring it forth to light. Anything holding me back that's not of you, bring it forth to light. And unforgiveness comes up sometimes. I ain't perfect. And I had to, God brought it to the, to the light. I need you to forgive your family for how they have done over the years. I need you to forgive them for talking about you. I need you to forgive them for doing things behind your back, calling you crazy because you're different. I need you to forgive them. And I literally had to call my family. <laughs> that was hard. That was hard. Because it was like, humble yourself. My pride... Did not want me to do it. But again, that's the devil. The devil wants you to stay proud. Like, nope, I'm good. Whatever. I can keep walking forward. I ain't got to tell them. I ain't got to say I'm sorry. And then you walking around mad. You walking around angry. You walking around bitter. You walking around resentful. Because your pride won't let you say I'm sorry. Or I forgive you. You missing out on your blessings. 
You missing out on your blessings because you won't forgive them for something they did. And you think that it bothers them more than you. Anyway, so that answers your question, right? But you have to get to the point where you totally release them. You totally release them so that you can be set free. One of the things God wants us to do the most is to forgive others. The absolute most. It's, it's mentioned so many times in the Bible. One of the things that he wants us to do the absolute most is to forgive others. And I know it's easier said than done. I know it's easier said than done. But like I said, when we forgive others, it releases us. It releases us and it releases the power that, excuse me, that they have over us. In Matthew chapter 18, verse 22, it says, the word is clear. This is not what it says, but the word is clear in Matthew chapter 18, verse 22. It says, you know, God expects us to forgive as many times as we need to. Let me ask you a question. Thank you, Holy Spirit. What if God didn't forgive you for what you've done? What if God held it against you for all the times that you're disobedient to him? What if God said, nope, not this time. Not this time. That might make you look at forgiveness a little bit differently. Because what if God doesn't forgive us for all the mess that we do? Because we are a sinful generation. But the Bible says you should forgive as many times as you need to. And it actually says, uh, Matthew chapter 18, verse 22 says, I tell you, this was, again, about the unforgiving debtor. And Peter goes to Jesus and says, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or my sister who sins against me? How many times? Up to seven times. And, and Jesus answers. He said, I tell you, not seven times, but 77 times. And he not saying you got to literally be like, oh, my God, I forgive you 77 times, 77 times, 77, whatever. He's saying as many times as you need to. As many times as it takes for you to clean your heart, you need to forgive him. If you got to go lay in your closet, lay on the floor, whatever your space is with God and bring them to bring them to name. I mean, bring them to light by name. God, I forgive. I don't want to say nobody's name because I don't want to think I'm talking about them, but I forgive mm -hmm, him. But put the person's name, right? I forgive Thomas for Dot, 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 dot. And if you still feel like it didn't work, do it again. 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 Until you feel a peace with that person and what they did to you. Forgive them as many times as you need to. God gives you the grace to do so. Therefore, you should. And I, like I said, it's, it's not always easy to forgive certain offenses. You know, it, it, it may have caused us trauma. It may not be as easy for you to forgive. But if you think about it, man, God forgives everybody. Like I said, what if God didn't forgive you for what you did against people? Now let's get into the scripture, right? Because I always want to bring, I always want to make sure you all know I'm coming from the word and I'm not just talking. So the scripture God led me to speak about or the story in scripture is the story of Joseph. He was the son of Jacob. And from early on, 
Joseph was favored by his father. He was favored by his father. He had dreams. He had visions. He was favored by God early on. So his brothers didn't care for him because he was a favorite. He was a favorite. So his brothers didn't like him and they hated that he, God spoke to him through his dreams. So he tells them, he tells them his dreams and they're like, what do you think? You're going to rule over us one day? Because God had given him a dream of, you know, um, Jacob, the story of Joseph is in Genesis, y'all. I'm sorry. It's in Genesis um, chapter 5 through 11. So I'm just giving you the synopsis of it, right? But he had dreams. Basically, I mean, God spoke to him through his dreams, letting him know like one day that he would be a king. He didn't say he was going to be a king, but the way the dream was revealed to him. Let him know like he's going to rule. So he tells his brothers and they like, who do you think you are? You're going to rule over us? Yeah, whatever. And then he had another dream, similar. And he tells brothers and he tells his dad and his dad. All of them shunned him. All of them was like, yeah, you going to rule over me? You think you finna rule over me? So his brothers actually, because they didn't like him, they actually took him out in the field where he went to look for them and they threw him in a well. They threw him in a well. They, the plan was to kill him. The plan was to kill him. But somebody came along and said, no, no. What we're not going to do is kill. We're going to kill him. We don't want this blood on our hands, right? I think it was Judah, if I'm not mistaken. But he says, we don't want the blood on our hands. Just throw him here in the well and leave him. No, take him out and we're going to sell him into slavery. So they sell we talking about his brothers. We talking about family. Y'all always, people be like, but it's your family. But sometimes your family can be the most toxic people that you have in your life. That's a fact. Anyway, they sell him into slavery. Joseph goes into, right. So Joseph goes into um, slavery and he ends up going to Egypt. Right? Because his brothers sold him. Because they were jealous of him. He ended up as a slave under uh, Pot Potiphar. I'm probably saying it wrong. But he ended up as a slave. And But he was favored. Y'all keep that in mind. He was favored by God. His brothers threw him in the well. They wanted to kill him. They ended up selling him into slavery. He goes into um, part of Potiphar's kingdom in Egypt. And um, he ends up, his wife, Potiphar's wife, actually wants to sleep with him. But he's like, no, like, fall back, little mama, fall back. No, I ain't going to do that. But she got mad because he didn't want to sleep with her. So she set him up, pulled a piece of his cloak or whatever, and told her husband that he ended up, um, that he ended up, uh, that he slept with her. And he ends up getting thrown in jail. Okay? He ends up getting thrown in jail. So we talking about his brothers and his brothers have gone against him. He, he's been lied on. The, the wife of the person uh, in Egypt lied on him. And now he in jail. He was a slave. Now he in jail. And he had favor though. He had favor. And eventually he ended up becoming like Pharaoh was the king of Egypt. And he ends up coming Pharaoh's like right hand. Right? Because he had favor. The favor of God was on him. So he ended up coming Pharaoh's right hand. Okay, and so um, Joseph, it was a famine in the land. It was a famine in the land. I'm sorry, y'all. It was a famine in the land, and 
his family had no food. So they had to go down to Egypt to get some food, you know, right? And when they, something's on my foot. I apologize, guys. But um, his family goes down to Egypt. His brothers, mind you, that sold him into slavery, <laughs> that wanted to kill him. They go down to Egypt. They buy, they get food from him. They get food from him, not knowing that it's their brother. Not knowing that he about to save their whole life, right? And basically, in a nutshell, they ended up realizing he told him, right? They didn't recognize him. And he ended up telling them that he was their brother. So they went back, told their dad, because dad thought he was dead all this time. Dad thought Joseph was dead. So went back and told his, they went back and told his uh, dad that, oh, you know, our brother down in, or your son down here in Egypt, he helping us, he giving us food. He want us to come down there and live. He had to actually, Joseph had to forgive them. He had to forgive them because it hurt him so bad what his brothers did to him. It hurt him so bad to the core. I want to say the Bible say he cried. It hurt him to the core. But he had to forgive them. He, he, he found it in his heart to forgive them for what they had done to him. And he ends up, basically, they end up moving to Egypt and he ended up saving their life. Because... He took care of them when they got to Egypt. But he had to forgive them. You're talking about somebody that threw him and threw him, wanted to kill him, number one. Threw him in the well to die. Sold him to be a slave. <laughs> the wife of somebody where he where he at now. Now his life already falling down. She Gets him in trouble so that he goes to jail. He ends up being the right hand man of the king. He had to forgive everybody that had hurt him. He had to forgive every single one of them that hurt him. And in this story, we learn that it's possible to forgive those who have wronged us. We learn that it's possible to forgive them. No matter how bad they hurt you. No matter what they did. If you want to build your relationship with God, you want your prayers to start getting answers. You want your prayers to start getting answered and to start seeing the blessings that God has promised for your life. You got to learn to forgive those who have hurt you. It's like a must. Like, not an option. It's a must. Forgiveness still may be difficult. Even after you hear all of this that I'm saying, even after you just heard the story of Joseph, it still may be difficult because you don't necessarily understand how you can let someone go that hurt you. How you can let someone go that hurt you. But let me tell you what forgiveness is not. Let me tell you what it's not because we have this misconception that it's all of these things, but it's not, it's not, um, it does not mean approving what, what they did. You're not approving it. You're not saying it's okay. You're not saying that it's okay. It does not mean that you're pretending it never took place. You're not for, forgetting it. You know it happened. God knows it happened. But you're not 
saying that it never took place. Right? Well, another thing that forgiveness is it doesn't mean. It doesn't mean that you're making an excuse for their bad behavior. It doesn't mean that you're overlooking the abuse or what they did. It doesn't mean that you're denying the fact that others have tried to hurt you repeatedly or they have hurt you repeatedly. It doesn't mean that. It doesn't mean that you're letting everyone else walk over, walk all over you because you're choosing to forgive them. It doesn't mean that you're refusing to press charges if you have to. <laughs> it doesn't mean that you are forgetting that the wrong was done. It doesn't even mean that you pretending that you were never hurt. Because you were. It hurt. And like I said earlier, it doesn't mean that you have to reconcile with them. It doesn't mean that you have to allow them back into your life just because you forgive them. Right? So now that we cleared up some of the misconceptions, because you may be thinking some of those things that I just said, that you had to do some of that. Henceforth, why you have such a difficult time forgiving. But now you know that you don't have to. You don't, it, it doesn't mean you're absolving them of what they did to you at all. They're not getting a pass. You're just passing it, allowing God to take care of it. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. You're just giving them a pass. I mean, you are. Hey, Q. I guess it's Quincy. I don't know. Anyway, you're just giving them a pass. I mean, you are saying, listen, I'm going to let God take care of this. Because what can I do? What happened? <laughs> I can't go backwards. I can't change it. I can't make it better. So why am I holding on to it? Again, it's causing me way more pain than it is them. They have way more control over my life than I, than I think. I always like to talk about the benefits of things, right? So because I feel like sometimes when you know the benefit of something, then you may want to do it. When you know how it impacts you, when you know how it helps you, when you know how it benefits you, you want to maybe do it a little bit more when you see how it helps your life. So let's talk about the benefits of forgiveness. Forgiveness actually heals you. Like I have on a cellular level, right? Where... It, when you hold grudges and you hold resentment in your heart, it actually, you have negative emotions that build up in every part of your body. Every cell in your body is holding on to what this person has done to you. Henceforth, while you may feel tension in your shoulders, while your jaws get tight or clench you, you clench your teeth when you see them or you hear them. I mean, every cell in your body is full of negative emotions, grudges, and resentment. When you choose to forgive someone, you are letting go of all of that extra weight. You're letting go of all of the uh, extra, the burden that's on you. That's on you. It's heavy. It's like a weight you're carrying around, literally. It may not seem like it's a lot, but it can actually hold, like, hold you down. It can make you tired. It can make you like slow you down. You feel drained. Because you don't even realize how much this, this uh, unforgiveness is eating away at you. From literally from the inside out. Literally. 
It's eating away at you. And as you continue to not forgive people, it's continuously eating you, eating away from you. But the more you let go, the more you start to feel lighter. The more things you don't feel as burdened. You don't feel as weighed down. You feel like more energized. You have more, you're more empowered to do something. So it helps you on a cellular level, right? I mean, in health benefits, you know, you have less stress. Your blood pressure probably not as high. You, you, your, your energy may increase. Your sleep may be better. Because you ain't laying up at night sitting up thinking about what somebody did to you. Your outlook on life changes. Like, and those are just topical things of how it helps you health-wise. But I, I wasn't even talking about health, right? Another way forgiveness helps you is... It's actually the basis of self-love. It's an act of loving yourself. When you forgive of others, you actually are loving yourself. Thank you, Quincy. Thank you for sharing the video. I'm building up my, 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 my TikTok. So share, share, share. Everybody on here, share. Okay. I'm building it up. I don't go live much. I don't even post much on TikTok, but I'm about to change it. But anyway, thank y'all. But anyway, forgiveness is, is an act of self-love. Right? When you learn to forgive yourself, because that's the hard one. We have a difficult time forgiving ourselves. But when you learn how to forgive yourself, you really start to love yourself unconditionally. I did a whole live last week on love. What is love? If you didn't watch it or you didn't catch it, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel, Samantha J. West. Yes, Shay with love. Look, I just said that. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, Samantha J. West, right? And if you, because when you hold on to things, you're actually hurting yourself. You're hurting yourself and you're not letting it go. You're not letting it go. So you're not forgiving yourself for the things that you've allowed to happen. I write posts on threads sometimes of I forgive myself for and one I wrote not too long ago. I said, you know, I forgive myself for allowing things, the things that I allowed in my life. When I didn't know any better, I forgive myself because I allowed some trash, straight trash in my life when I didn't know how to love me. When I ain't know no better, I forgive myself. It's hard to forgive ourselves because it's like we're facing ourselves in the mirror and we have to be honest with ourselves. So it's hard to say, listen, I forgive myself for, you know, allowing this to happen in my life. But when you learn how to forgive yourself, you are actually um, learning to love yourself more. You're learning to love yourself more, right? So do me a favor. I always like for you guys to have notes, a notepad rather, and a pen so we can take notes because I'm always going to drop something. I'm going to give you something to do or whatever. But anyway... Do, do me a favor. I want you to sit down and make a list. Make a list of all the ways that you have hurt yourself in the past. Make a list of all the ways you've hurt yourself in the past. It could be anything. It could be eating unhealthy. It could be not speaking kindly to yourself. You know, whatever. Not giving yourself what you deserve. It could be settling for less than you deserve. Whatever. Make a list of all the ways that you've hurt yourself in the past. Right? And then once you've made the list, start to forgive yourself for these things one by one. 
And you can do it like this. You can say, um, you writing down what you did, and then you saying out loud, you saying out loud, I forgive myself for X, Y, Z. I forget, like I just said, I forgive myself for dealing with, for accepting the things that I accepted when I didn't know how to love myself better. I forgive myself for settling in many of the relationships that I've been in. I forgive myself for giving myself less than I deserve over the years. Whatever your I need to forgive myself is, whatever your blank is, forgive yourself. Forgive yourself because that's a way that you start to love yourself. And we, we, we're talking about the benefits of forgiveness. And it may be difficult for you to do this at first, but it's always a process. Nothing starts here. It always starts here. But it's a process. And like I mentioned from the beginning... My goal is that I want to help as many souls as I can go to go cross over to God as many as I can. So whatever I need to do to break all these chains off of us, I'm with it. I'm with it. So if you really want to break the chains, I just strongly suggest you listen and do the work. It ain't easy. I never tell you it is. I don't want anyone to ever believe that it is. Because it's not. It's not. But the more you do it, the easier it becomes. The better it becomes for you. You start to, since I'm talking about forgiveness, you start to draw closer to God. You start to love yourself more. You start to have a better understanding and of yourself what you want and what you desire in life, and you have self-love. We're taught everything else in school, but we are not taught how to love ourselves. And it's, it's time that we learn. It's time that we forgive people for the pain that they have caused, caused us. Another way that forgiveness is beneficial for you is to, it helps you to let go of the past. It helps you to let go of the past and really get what God has for you. You want to know the promises God has for you? Start, read Deuteronomy chapter 28. Read the beginning part where it talks about your... Um, Blessings for obedience. That's just a small portion of the Bible of where God speaks about the promises that he has for us. And if you want these blessings, I know I do. I ain't out here doing this for nothing. I want every bit of what God got for me. Every bit of it. So, I'm willing to forgive. I'm willing to push past because, hey, I don't want to hold on to the past. I'm, it's the past. I'm good. The more you forgive, you let go of the past and you really start to bring forth what God has for you. And that's why I said, look at Deuteronomy chapter 8, so you can, 28, sorry, so that you can start to see, when you start to see the benefits of forgiveness. When you can grasp it. God said I will grant you abundant. Abundant prosperity. But you got to obey my commands. One of his commands is. Be obedient. Be obedient. But forgive. You want to have abund abundant prosperity. It's also in Deuteronomy where it says, where I'm taking you, you will lack nothing. 
nothing. Your hands will be blessed. Everything you touch will be blessed. Come on, man. But you got to obey my, but you got to obey my commands. One of my commands is to forgive. How many times you supposed to forgive? As many times as it takes. As many times as it takes. It helps you let go of the past and you can start really bringing God's promises into your life. The answers to your prayers come behind forgiveness. When your attention is focused on the past, it's difficult for you to see what's ahead. It's diff difficult for you to focus on the promises of God because you're focused on what's behind you. Not what God doing in your life right now and not what he will do if you just let the past go. Keeps you in a, a, a constant state of um, confusion and a lack of clarity. Because you focus on what's behind you. And then the, truth, the, the way you can truly break these shackles and these chains off your mind is to let go and forgive. Learn how to forgive. You got to learn how to forgive. Again, I'm going to say this because I'm putting emphasis on it. It does not mean that you are saying that the other person is right. It's not giving them a pass. It's not saying, hey, let's reconcile. Let's be friends again. Or let's do this. No. It's not saying any of that. It's just saying that you you choosing you over them. You are choosing, you want the blessings God has for your life, right? And it, you're no longer giving that energy. You're no longer giving it attention. You're no longer allowing it to have power over your life. Your time and energy and attention. People pay for your attention. People pay for your time. People will pay you. I ain't going to say energy, but they may. But they pay for your attention. They pay for your attention. You got to be mindful of where you're giving it. Who's getting your attention? What's getting your attention? If you're holding on to the past, you're holding on to what someone has done to you and what they did or whatever, that's getting your attention. It's like you paying. you paying the past to continue to hold on to your attention. Put a monetary value on it, Right? Forgiveness, another benefit, forgiveness actually helps you increase your inner strength. It helps you develop your inner strength. Because it takes a lot. Hold on, y'all. One moment, please. Sorry. coming. Pause one moment, please. I gotta hook up my computer. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. So back to what I was saying. Um, it, forgiveness increases your inner strength because you're holding on. It takes a lot of strength for you to hold on to the past. It takes a lot of strength for you to continue to hold on to the past. It takes a lot of anger for you to hold on to the past. It takes a lot of resentment for you to hold on to the past. It takes a lot of bitterness for you to continue to hold on to the past. The more you do it, the more natural it's going to become for you. Again, it's not easy. Never said it is. Never said it was. Never said it will be. 
But the more you forgive, the stronger you become with them. So, I have spoken about how, what forgiveness is not. I have told you guys how to actually, it took my light. I've told you what forgiveness is not. I have given you benefits of actually forgiving other people and forgiving yourself. And now, I want to just in this with how you can actually forgive. She's like, okay, sound good, Samantha, but what steps do I need to take? What? Oh, never mind. Um, what steps can I take to actually forgive other people? How can I really let this go? The pain hurt. It hurt. It's hard for me to let go of this pain. First of all, this is not even a part of my steps, but the Holy Spirit just dropped this on me. First of all, you need to go to God and ask him to give you strength to help you let it go. Because it's not something you can do by yourself, especially if you've been holding on to it for a long time, especially if it's something that you know that really hurt you and it caused you a lot of pain, caused you a lot of trauma, you're going to need help. You cannot rely on your own strength for this at all. And like I said, that wasn't even on my notes, but that's a bonus, okay? But how can you truly forgive so that you can have, so that you can be released, so that you can release those who have hurt you and you have true freedom in your life, okay? The first way, number one, you have to acknowledge the pain. It may be hard to face it. It may be something you don't want to deal with. It may be something you don't want to talk about. It may be something that you try to sweep under the rug. But you have to learn how to face it and acknowledge it. Working through the pain only happens once you actually admit that you've been hurt. You got to admit it. Once you've actually, once you admit that you've been hurt, it helps you to work through it. Don't sweep it under the rug. Don't numb yourself to this pain or the stuff that's going on, the emotions that you feel. Don't numb yourself to it, right? Acknowledge it. Acknowledge the pain, acknowledge the resentment, acknowledge the feelings you feel when someone pops up on your timeline or you see things that they, they post or whatever and it bothers you. Bring it to the light. God, why do I feel this way when I see so-and-so and so-and-so post something? Why does it bother me? Why, why don't I like if somebody from my past and I'm thinking about I'm saying it for me right why why do I feel like ill when somebody from my past comes up and reaches out I acknowledge that bring it bring it to the light stop trying to hide it stop trying to say you know again don't let your pride take over don't let your pride make you think that you're too good to acknowledge it. Thank you for the roses. Thank you for the heart. I guess that's what people do on TikTok, right? I don't know. But anyway, acknowledge the pain. Right? Bring it forth to the light. Stop trying to act like it, it's not happening. I've had to do that with, um, I've seen like friends that I used to have. And why do we do that? Why do we go and look at their page or something and be like, girl, what you doing? Or you know, that ain't cute. Why? What value does that bring to us? 
And I, like I said, I've done it before. That's why I can speak on it. And that's what made me check myself. When I did that once before, I looked at one of my old friends' page, and I'm just like, it was something like, um, like, girl, are you really happy? Are you really, you know, like, girl, you know that ain't for you. And I, mm, I said, God, check me. Check me, because that ain't it. What's in me that made me say that? What makes me feel that way just because she posted this or she, no, ma'am. Bring it to the light. Don't be ashamed of your pain. That's the only way God going to help you through it. You got to speak about it. Another thing to help you truly forgive is to think through things. I told you guys to write down stuff that you need to forgive yourself about. But you might want to take it a little further and write down some things that you need to forgive others for as well. Write them down by name. Hey, I need to forgive Zachariah for this, 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 and that. I forgive, not only I forgive myself for that, 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 that. I forgive Zachariah for this, 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 this. I forgive Mackenzie for that, that, that. And if I'm calling somebody's name, my bad. But it's not an issue. I forgive Mackenzie for this, this, this. I forget, you know, whatever. Write them down by name. And then think about it. Like, think through it. Like, hmm, how is this really helping me? Is it bringing me more sadness? Is it bringing me anger? Is it bringing me resentment? Is it bringing me happiness? Is this bringing me joy? Be honest about what happened. Be honest about how it made you feel. Think through it. Sit in it. God had me sit this over this past. Matter of fact, not last year, but year before last, I think. He had me sit in my feelings. I used to be quick to be the come out, you know, fist up, like I'm fighting. It ain't no flight. I'm fighting. Like, let's get it. Like you coming for me, I'm coming back. Right. But God said, listen, why are you getting frustrated about stuff? Like he had me literally sit in my feelings. I had to sit in it. I had to sit in this bitterness I had in my heart. I had to sit in the anger. I had to sit in the resentment that I was feeling. Why you feel like that, Samantha? Bring it to the light, guys, and think about it. Be honest about those emotions that are coming up. Because that's what's going to help you push past it. You got to be honest with yourself first. And like I said, before I gave, start giving y'all these tips, you're going, you need the help of God. God, I'm about to go into an exercise. I want my heart to be pure for you. I want to do whatever you want me to do, God. I want to have a heart of flesh. I want you to remove all this, the hardness around my heart. I want you to remove all the things, prune the people, the things, the thoughts, the words, the ideas, Everything that has caused me pain, everything that is not of you. I'm about to go into this season, God, because I want more of you. So I'm going to need your help because I can't do it by myself. I got to forgive myself for allowing all these slumlords in my life. I got to forgive Zachariah because he cursed my mama out. And that's a true story. His name wasn't Zachariah, though, okay? Treated me like trash, but I had to forgive him. I got to forgive this, this, this person because I want more of you. I want to do what you want me to do. I want the promises that you said I can have. And I know the only way I'm going to get them, God, I know for me to start hearing the answers to my prayers, for you to start hearing my cries, for me to start getting what you promised me, 
I know I got to start being obedient to your will. And one of your, one of your desires for my life, one of your commands is for me to forgive. God, it's hard for me though. So I need your help. I need your help. I want to face all this stuff because I need your help, but I need your help to face it. It takes me to a dark place, God. I need your help. And sit in it. Think it through. Okay? Another way you can truly forgive is imagine being on the other side. Like I said, put yourself in the shoes of what if God didn't forgive you for what you've done? Imagine being on the other side. Imagine how you might feel where well think about the time you've had to ask for forgiveness think about the time you maybe you didn't ask but you wanted somebody to forgive you how did it make you feel when you've wronged someone else how does it make you feel when you've wronged another person, did they extend forgiveness to you? Did they extend ex the forgiveness to you and did, or did they withhold it from you? How did you feel? How would you feel if God didn't forgive you for what you do wrong? What if he withheld his forgiveness from us? How would you feel? Put yourself on the other side. It may be, become a little easier for you when you start looking at it from a different lens. When you're in the picture, you can't see the frame around the picture. So when you start looking at it from the outside, looking in, what other people see, you may it may be a little bit easier for you. When you start looking, put yourself in their shoes. From the other side, the Bible tells us to do what others do to others what we would have them do unto us. Matthew chapter 7, verse 12. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. If you wouldn't want nobody to not forgive you, you shouldn't want to not forgive nobody else. Y'all understand? Put yourself in their shoes for just a moment. Just a moment. You may not, you may not ever do what they've done to you. But you've done something wrong to someone before. You've done something wrong to someone before and they forgave you. All right. The third way, or did I third, fourth? I don't know. How you can truly forgive is remember God's forgiveness. Remember how God forgives. Remind yourself that God gave his only son for us. God forgives you for everything that you've done against him. Multiple times. Multiple times. You, you've sinned against God multiple times. Don't say you haven't because you have. I have too. Even with the walk I walk now, I ain't perfect. I, I try to walk a straight and narrow walk. Sometimes I have a doubt you. Sometimes, you know, sometimes I got to forgive people. Sometimes I might be walking in pride and I know it. But I've come against God is my point. So, but remember God's forgiveness. If God can forgive us so much, then how can we sit up and hold 
things against other people. God even forgave them for what they've done to you. And he forgives you for what you're doing against him every day. He forgives you for your disobedience. He forgives you for having sex outside of marriage. He forgives you for um, pride. He forgives you for, you know, serving the devil more than you serve him. He forgives you every day. Right? So remember how God has forgiven you and continues to forgive you every day. Next, reflect on your command from the Bible. Biblical command. The Bible is life. This is life. Literally. It's food for your soul. Literally. Food for your soul. Hold on, y'all. You have to block people, you know. They come on with that foolishness. But anyway, reflect on the biblical command. I've told you in the Bible, it's in here. It's in here so many times. Forgiveness is in here so many times. It speaks about forgiveness and what, how we should forgive and the importance of forgiveness so many times. That means God wants us to forgive. He ain't just talking. He ain't just put it in here that much for no reason. My Bible actually, so I get a lot of questions about it, but it's in the back of it. It has like sections. So you can always go to, like if you want to find something about forgiveness, it tells you, oh, look how many. I'm going to show y'all. If you can see it clearly. You probably can't, but what is it? This is forgiveness here. It's all of these scriptures. It's about forgiveness. It even goes over to this page. That's how much is in the Bible. TikTok, you see? It's not clear on TikTok because it's not the best picture, but forgiveness is here. Sorry, it's a horrible picture on TikTok. But um, here, forgiveness. And it goes all the way down onto the next page. That's how much it's in the Bible. So many scriptures about it. So you need to reflect on the command that's in the Word. Get into the Word. So many people don't read the Bible. It's life, literally. God says in the word, forgive others. <laughs> seven, 70 times, 77 times. I'm probably saying it wrong, but forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Remember, we want the promises of God. Right? You want that abundant prosperity that God has promised you. You want to be in a land that's overflowing with milk and honey. You want to be, and you can say you don't, but you want it. You want it. You want to be in a position where everything that your hand touches is blessed. You want to be in a position where the, the floodgates of heaven open. Where God pours out a blessing where you don't have room enough to receive it all. And say you don't. Because you do. You want it. But in the Bible, be obedient. That's not, be obedient. Keep my commands. That's what God said. You want this life? You want this promised land? Keep my commands. In my word, I'm telling you to forgive. I'm telling you to forgive. So remember what the Bible says. And do what the Bible says. <laughs> Reflect on your biblical command. Next, let go of the hurt. So after you've done the first, what, five steps, 
then you 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 want to let go of the hurt. You've you've brought it to the light. You've admitted it. You've asked God to give you the strength to help you. You have. Um, I gotta go back and look at the steps, but you got, you've remembered. You know, you put yourself in their shoes. You you remember how God forgives us. So now, if you follow in the steps, it should be pretty easy for you to start letting it go. It should be pretty easy for you to start letting it go. The devil, the goal of the devil, steal, kill, and destroy. Period. He don't care how he does it. He don't care who he uses. He does not care. He ruthless. Ruthless. You hear me? And he will try to hold you back in a space of unforgiveness as long as you allow him to. He will continue to try to bring up what happened when you trying to let it go. He'll continue to try to make it run through your head constantly. Make you think about it. Make you get mad again. Make you be resentful. Make you hold on to that bitterness. Because he don't want you to let that go. He don't want you to let it go. Because when you start letting it go, you're starting to grow closer to God. You're starting to get more clarity, listen to God's voice more. You're starting to... Um, um, What's the word I'm looking for? You're starting to, um, I don't know, you know, let go. Love yourself more so you stop dealing with certain stuff. He don't want you to get to that place. So He's going to try to hold you back for sure. He's going to try to hold you back for sure, right? We're talking about, um, I don't even know the point. Oh, letting go. Letting go of the hurt. Letting go of the hurt. The devil gonna try to hold you back. The devil does not want you to let it go. And it, and you you when you've made a choice to forgive, it's it's fresh. You know, like it, it may be difficult. It may be difficult. But you gotta learn again with the strength of God, because you can't do it by yourself. God, I need you to help me. Give me give me strength, Lord. Help me to not replay this over and over and over in my mind. Clear my mind so that I don't constantly help me to forgive this person of these things or whatever so that I don't constantly replay what they did to me over and over and over again. So I can help me, God, to let it go. Help me to let go of the pain. Help me to let go of the hurt. Help me to let go of the trauma. Help me, God, to let it go. That's when you got to make that determination that you are going to move forward regardless. You're going to move forward regardless. Because guess what? Keep your eyes on the prize. God said in the word, keep your gaze on my beauty. Guess what the beauty is for me right now? Guess what I'm keeping my eyes on? The promises I told you about. The promises I told you about. The Bible is actually full of them. Full of the promises. I led you to Deuteronomy chapter 28. Just the beginning part. Blessings for obedience. You read that and let it soak in. I've been reading it, no lie, for about five days now same verses chapter two verse 20 i ain't i hadn't even gone past i'm on deuteronomy 28 and i'm reading i'm gonna tell y'all the verses verse 1 through 14 constantly because i want to do whatever i'm supposed to do to get god's promises for my life and I'm telling y'all to go there so you can sit in those promises. Keep your eyes on the prize. what I say? God said, keep your gaze directly on my beauty. Find some promises that stand out for you. 
So anytime you want to go back into this unforgiveness space, this space of uh, bitterness, this space of resentment, anytime you feel like it's okay for me to keep holding on to this mess, let me let me see what God said. Because God said, man, he said, the fruit of my womb will be blessed. If I just keep his commands, he said he's going to set me high above the nations on the earth, of, uh, on all the earth. He said, if I just keep his commands, he said, I'm blessed when I come in. I'm blessed when I go out. If I, if I just keep his commands, if I just stay obedient, if I just let this unforgiveness go in my heart, God says, everything that I put my hands to will be blessed. I just got to keep my eyes on his, on, the, on his promises because here come the devil trying to take me back into that space, trying to re help me remember what somebody did to me. But God said if I keep my gaze directly on his beauty. I'm going to stay focused. If I stay focused. Keep his commands. He said he's going to grant me abundant prosperity. Therefore. I ain't going back to that. I'm going to let this hurt go. I'm going to let this pain go. Because I want what God said. That's how you can learn how to let it go. Keep your eyes focused on what God said. Continue to forgive. That's another thing. Continue to another um, tip. Continue to forgive. I told y'all this earlier. You might have to go in your closet, your space, your, your quiet place with God. Listen, God, look, I gotta get I gotta forgive Zachariah again because. I don't think it worked. I don't think it worked. I, I, I forgive him, God, for... Again, I'm using myself as an example. I forgive him, God, for cursing my mama. I forgive him for being... Not dealing with his own childhood trauma. I forgive him for treating me the way he did. Hey, God, I'm back again, God. I know I asked you... I, I know I asked for help for this yesterday, but I need help again. Because I, I ain't really let it go yesterday. I need to give, I need to, I'm coming back because I need to let Zachariah go. I need to let the pain go that he caused me. So I, I'm coming back. Forgive again. Continue to forgive as many times as you need to. God ain't tired of hearing you say it. He ain't tired of hearing your, your prayers. He ain't tired of you asking him to help you forgive this person. It's a serious decision. You have to make a decision that you will not continue this cycle in your life. It's a decision. When you go and say, God, help me with this, this, and that. Oh, he going to help you. Believe that. But he wants you to make the decision to let it go. It's a decision that you got to make to continue to forgive over and over and over and over again. It's uncomfortable. It's painful. You ain't going to want to do it. But I promise you, it's worth it in the end. It's worth it in the end. The promises. The promises God said. It's worth it. Because can't not a single soul say you don't want them promises. Not a single soul on neither one of these lives can say that. It's worth it in the end. Continue to forgive over and over and over again. Until you cannot forgive anymore. Until you know... Sharon Lane, Sharon Y. Lane, baby girl, I'm going to need you to go catch it from the beginning, okay? Because we've done a whole live on that. So I'm, I'm not going backwards for you. I'm going to need you to catch it from the beginning. It's on my YouTube, it'll be on my YouTube channel, Samantha J. West. Subscribe so you can make sure you get the notifications when I'm going live, okay? Or when I post, all right?
but continuously forgive. And then lastly, y'all, whoo, this one might be hard. This one may be hard for some people. But again, keep in mind, we've been through seven steps. Seven steps. If you do them in the order that I gave, it may be a little bit easier. If you try to do them out of order, it may work. I'm sure it will. But it's a reason they in this order. Because the last one is to pray for the person who hurt you. Pray for the person who hurt you. In Matthew chapter 5 verse 44. Jesus commands us to love your enemies. And to pray for those who persecute you. I want to read my version. Uh, Matthew 5 and 44. Five and forty-four. Let's say you love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. So yeah, same, right? Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Those who have come against you, pray for them. Another promise God got in, in Deuteronomy that I keep leading y'all to. He said, your enemy, first of all, this ain't in Deuteronomy, but one of the things God says is, I am an enemy to your enemies. Then in Deuteronomy, he said, your enemy will come at you one way, but will leave from you seven ways. I ain't going to even let them touch you. I ain't going to even let them get to you. Pray for them. Pray that God... Heal whatever may have hurt them that it caused them to hurt you. Pray that God bring them peace. Pray for them. Prayers don't hurt. You ain't hurt nobody. You helping yourself release by praying for them. And then who knows? You may be saving them from saving their soul from going to hell. I'm telling you, girl, Island Beauty, that one right there, girl. That's why I said it might. Shireen underscore Damon, you're welcome. Um, I don't know, no, no other way to be, honestly. But pray for the person who hurt you, right? Ask God to reveal his love to your offender in your heart. Ask God to give you his love for them. Ask God to give you his love, the love he got for them, and put it in your heart. That right there. Ask him to help you dissolve the negative emotions that you have towards this person or these people. And name them. Name them. God will give you Everything you need in order for you to forgive them. You'll have strength unlike no other. You will have a peace that comes upon you that you, you can't even explain how you let this situation go that you've been holding on to for so long. You won't even be able to explain it. God tells us in his word I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Philippians chapter 4, 4 verse 13. That means if you can't do it by yourself, I can do anything through God that gives me the strength. I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength to do them. That's what I said. before. That was the bonus point that I gave at the beginning. You're going to need God's help. You cannot do this by yourself. Trying to do it in your own strength, in your own power, in your own might. You ain't going to do it. You ain't going to do it. God will give you the grace to forgive them. And he will help you learn to love them the way he loves them. 
I'm telling you, you look back like, how did I ever let that go? Nobody but God. And that's all God wants anyway. He wants the glory for your life. Nobody but God helped me get over that. Nobody but God helped me forgive my ex for, for treating me the way he did and for cursing my mama out. Nobody but God. All right. So listen, I gave y'all a lot tonight. But I hope that it helped somebody. Thank you, baby girl. Or Shireen for buying a, a badge. I appreciate it. But I hope it helps somebody. I hope it helps somebody. Because, like I said, my goal is to save souls. However God tell me to do it. I'm here every Wednesday, 6.30 Central, I always get it mixed up because I'm so used to Eastern time, but Central Standard Time, every Wednesday, 6.30. I'm here because we got, it's time to break these chains, man. Like, stop letting the devil win. Stop letting the devil win. God already won the battle, you, but you got to fight. You got to fight the fight. And you keep holding on to all this pain, all this hurt, all this bitterness, all this anger. I want the money. That's it. So you're out. You're on Eastern time. So I'm central. I'm an hour behind you. But um, you're holding on to all this pain, all this bitterness. And somebody probably, something probably happened to you years ago. I'm going to tell you how this real quick. I'm going to tell you how forgiveness eats you alive. Remember that was one of my points? My very first thing, how forgiveness, when you forgive someone, it helps you on a cellular level. My ex. I've told the story about my ex several times. And I'm going to tell it quick because I'm ready to go. But my ex, he was a, a cancerous person. Okay? <laughs> like, not a cancer. I don't know what this sign was. But he was a cancerous person. He was a devil, I believe, with with... Uh, dark flesh, like, like, look that looked like a man, but anyway, he had something happen to him when he was three. Three, when we met, he was 36, I think. I don't know, anyway, he was three. His mama left him when he was three. When we met, he was 36. Y'all hear me? 36. And this dude still was holding on to the fact that his mom left him when he was three. I get it. I am not saying that that ain't something bad. I ain't saying that that's, you know, like, I get, the, I get why he was hurt by that. I get it. But he was so evil. Like, it literally, that pain ate him alive. Literally. He was so he was bitter, he was resentful, he was angry, he was just mad at the world. All because something that happened when he was three. So what are you holding on to today that happened? It might not have happened when you were three. It might have. It might not have happened 50 years ago. It might have. But it might have happened yesterday. But what are you holding on to? That's got you full of anger, full of bitterness, full of resentment. All right, TikTok. I'll see y'all next week. Um, Wednesday, 6.30 Central Standard Time. Later. Um, all right. All right, y'all. Yeah, so, but what are you holding on to? I want you to start that tonight. I don't care if it's 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 12 o'clock. I don't care. Start that tonight. God, help me forgive me, first of all, for that, 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 that. Whatever it is. Admit everything. And God, help me to forgive 
this person, this person, this person. Not just, God, help me to forgive this person for dot, dot, dot. Help me to forgive this person for dot, dot, dot. Help me to forgive this one for dot, dot, dot. Watch how God start to turn your life around. Watch how much peace you start to feel for that situation towards that person. Then pray for them. I, I, it'll change your whole life. Like I said, nobody but God. Nobody but God helped me to forgive my ex. And not even just him. And now he reached out to me not too long ago. And I was like, hey, what's up? You know, like it was it was nothing. I've prayed for him. Everything I told you guys, I've literally done it. I've literally done it. But it started tonight. The 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 assignment that I gave started tonight. Cause at some point you you gotta want something different for yourself. You gotta want a different life for yourself. Close that out. So I hope this live helped someone. I hope it helped someone. And if it didn't help you, share it with somebody that you know it will help. Tag a friend, whatever. Because at some point, guys, it ain't it ain't their fault. It's your Is it back live? My baby girl just called. See, and she should be in bed. Yeah, so I hope it helps someone. Like I said, if it didn't help you, share it with someone that it did. Tag them. Make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel, Samantha J. West on YouTube. And let's just, man, let's, come on, man. I want to save your soul. I really do. If it helped you, feel free to sow into my ministry. It will be greatly appreciated. You're welcome, Shay, with love. But um, I think I'm saying your name right. But sow into my ministry. I pinned the uh, ways you can sow. So my Cash App and my Zelle, it's appreciated. Anything you give, I am grateful for. I don't care if it's a dollar, $25, $50. I don't care what it is. Everything you give always goes right back to God. I'm a big, I'm huge on tithing. I give everything right back to God. So if it helped you, make sure you sow. I appreciate each and every one of you. I am back every Wednesday, 6.30 Central Standard Time. I love you more than anything. Subscribe to my YouTube if you missed any of my other videos. I'm actually going to stop taking, stop doing them on, stop saving them on Instagram and they'll all be on my YouTube channel. So, Samantha J. West on YouTube. I'll see y'all next week.